Next on the list of brake parts is the steam brake. I need to make the cylinder, piston, cover and drain valve. I start with a gunmetal casting for the block and unlike the last castings I used this one is quite clean. One end has already been crudely cleaned, the base is pretty flat and the other end has been sawn off, I guess from a larger block of castings. The non-machining faces look quite good, although the base as it is is wonky, but that would be easy enough to sort. I think the base is good enough to use as an initial clamping face, as is the curved top of the casting. My preference here is to use one of the long size as a crude reference to get me going, so I use a square in the machine vise to set the part accordingly. With it clamped tight, I use my fly cutter to clean up one end. Next I flip the part in the machine vise and start to clean up the other end, which I realise is not a good idea, as I should be using the end that I have just cleaned up as a reference face against the rear face of the chuck, so I abandon this cut and reposition the casting accordingly. I use a couple of parallels to raise it off the bottom of the vise, position the clean face against the rear jaw and use a small piece of brass against the front jaw. I crudely set the top of the casting levelish by eye. I'll be finishing this face later. I now reposition the casting in the vise again, this time with the base against the rear jaw of the vise and the machined end against the bottom. And now I clean off the other end. I'm going to come back to all of these faces later, so I'm not machining any of them to the final dimensions. I just want the ends parallel to each other and perpendicular to the base. The outer diameter of the cylinder is meant to be 1 inch, so 25.4mm for me, and it's pretty close, which is good. So I use a piece of 1 inch bar to mark out the bore on one end. It's this marked line that I use to position the casting in the forge or chuck. I use a sharp tool as reference and position it by eye. As I've done before, I use some electrical tape to hold some small pieces of brass to go against the jaws, although I don't bother on the base because this will be machined again later. I've also used a parallel to help set the part square in the chuck. If it's not straight, the bore will not be central at the other end. I'm not looking for super accuracy with the position of the bore, but I do want it to look right. The required bore is 16mm, so relying on my recently found knowledge of modifying drill bits to give zero rake on the cutting faces, I quickly open it out to 15mm before changing to using a boring bar. For the boring cuts, I cut all the way in and all the way back out each time, and for cuts prior to measuring, I go through twice in each direction to take out any spring in the bar. The measurement gods must be smiling on me today as I'm getting consistent readings with my telescopic gauge, something I often struggle with. Before dropping the part out of the fore jaw, I face off the front to ensure that it's perpendicular to the bore. I also use a countersink tool to remove any burr and put a slight chamfer on the end. I'm not really able to see how well the bore has come through at this end as the edges with the outer surfaces are not square. So I'll check again after I face off this end to bring the cylinder down to the correct length. To finish off the outer dimensions I take the same approach as I did for the main cylinders on the loco and turn a mandrel. This consists of a length of mild steel bar turned down to 6mm diameter for a close fit on the bore the end of which is tapered ever so slightly at approximately 2 degrees for a couple of mil to provide the grip to hold the cylinder. I've also drilled and tapped an N5 hole in the end, which we'll come back to later. 
A sharp tap with a plastic mallet seats the cylinder nicely and I face off the end to bring it down to length at 25.4mm. Unlike most of the other dimensions on the casting, there's a lot to come off here. Next, I move the mandrel onto the milling machine using a collet block in the machine vise to hold it in place. I now need to machine the base so that it's 16mm from the centre of the bore. I also want to remove the wonkiness I referred to earlier and I do this by positioning the cylinder by eye. As we can see, the base is facing the table and I'm using a set of parallels to help me set the position. Once I'm happy, I clamp the cylinder in position on the mandrel and rotate the collet block through 180 degrees so that the base is facing upwards. I've already established the top of the mandrel with respect to my fly cutter so it's now just a case of bringing the base down to dimension. Drilling and tapping the four mounting holes is a simple job after first having established the centre of the base and this I have done with reference to the bore. Because the cylinder is single actin, and by that I mean it only operates under pressure in one direction, only one cover is required. The last feature on the cylinder block is the hole for the drain valve. This is going to be a bit tricky. Firstly, because at 4mm deep it's shallow, which will make tapping it difficult, and secondly, because it needs to be drilled through to the bore, very close to the end. First, I drill the hole, 3mm diameter, 4mm deep, which I then tap at 532 by 32 TPI. To tap the hole, I first use a taper tap that I've ground back enough to let me establish the thread, and I follow up with a plug tap. Again, I've ground this back to give me as much thread depth as possible. I am doing this very carefully to ensure the tap doesn't bottom out and snap. I now need to connect the bottom of the hole through to the bore. And to help, I've marked on the base where I want the hole to break through. And then I position the block by eye in the vise. Drilling this is quite nerve wracking, the chance of the drill snatching and breaking is high and yes I'm sure there are much more scientific ways of doing this. To make the pistons I'm not going to be doing anything that I haven't already covered off in this video series so I'll be keeping the narration to a minimum. One thing to note is that not for the first time Don has specified the use of brass on a part that we in contact with steam. The valve chest covers, back in part 27, are made from some 4mm copper sheet. Back then I did spend a little time looking into the use of brass on parts in contact with steam, from which I concluded that desinctification is a given, but it's unlikely that the rate at which it happens will impact on the parts I'm making. So for now at least I will make the piston as specified from brass, it's a relatively simple part should I need to remake it at some point in the future.
The final feature for the piston is for a small pin to be inserted on the steam face. This I assume is to prevent the piston retracting right back to the cover and giving no room for the steam to act, as well as to prevent it from blocking the hole through to the drain valve. Don specifies that this should be 1.6mm diameter, but the smallest I have is 3.2mm, which is what I use. With the hole drilled, I secure a small piece of the bar with some Loctite 648 before turning it to length. As I mentioned earlier, there is only one cylinder cover and although Don specifies that this be made from brass, I use some fossil bronze bar. I use the parting off tool to start the cut to remove the cover from the stock before completing with a hacksaw. To machine the inside I make another mandrel and loctite the cover to it. A check with the dial gauge gives me a run out of 0.04 to 0.05mm which I decide will be ok and crack on with facing it off. In a previous video Gargar of Gargar's man cave asked if I ever had the loctite fail on me to which the answer was no but there's a first time for everything. After cleaning, I reapply the Loctite and this time leave it overnight to go off. And as a bonus, the run out is now reduced to 0.02 mil. I machine the index on the inside of the cover and although I can get it to fit to the front end of the cylinder, I struggle with the rear, which is where it needs to be fitted. After a close look I notice that the bore has been slightly deformed close to the four cover bolt holes and in a botched attempt to resolve I managed to badly score it. To remove the scoring I move back onto the milling machine and after carefully clamping the cylinder in the machine vise I find the centre and use a boring head. I'm not great lover of these boring heads this unit in particular seems to have little correlation between the adjustment scale and the actual depth of cut, but that may be more of a reflection on my ongoing challenge to successfully use telescopic gauges. I do take my time in creeping up the cutting face as I want to remove as little material as possible. Once I've found a cutting point I take multiple small cuts until the scoring is no longer visible. So I save the cylinder block but it does mean that I now need to make a new piston this time at 16.2mm diameter. We'll come back to that later. Back to the cover. This I can save and as I didn't remove the cover from the mandrel whilst I turned the new piston, I refit the mandrel to the lathe using the forge or chuck. I now face off the existing index and turn the new one, the cover being 0.8mm thinner than Don's original design, but I can live with that. The drain valve consists of two parts, one that is threaded 532 by 32 TPI at both ends and the body that houses a stainless steel ball. Making these is theoretically a simple turning exercise but being so small does bring some difficulties.
After turning and threading one end of the first part, I make a simple mandrel to hold it via the thread to allow me to do the other end. The bore inside the body has a flat bottom for the ball to seal against, so again I use a drill with the point ground flat. The thread only goes part way into the bore so that once assembled there is space for the ball to lift off the seat. Prior to assembly I did of course have to make a new piston to suit the slightly enlarged bore. In doing so I did need to consider the o-ring which also needs to be oversized from the original. Luckily I was able to source a size to suit. Checking how the bore looks at either end of the block it does appear slightly off centre at one end but that is more down to inconsistencies in the casting and it's not enough to draw from the overall look. Bearing in mind, of course, that this part will not be visible once the loco is assembled. The cover fits as it should, but I do still need to make a gasket for it. With the O-ring, the piston is a tightish fit into the bore, and of course there is no cover for this end. The piston travel will be limited by the brake gear once it's all connected. To fully assemble the drain valve I will need to fit a 332, 2.4mm in my world, stainless steel ball, but as I don't have any I'll need to do that later.